Let's now introduce momentum. Momentum is defined as the product of uh, mass and velocity. Do take note that momentum is a vector quantity and uh, force therefore is now defined as rate of change of momentum. Uh, back in the O level, you use F equal to MA. Uh, that's no longer uh, appropriate at the A level. At the A level, they use F equal to DPDT. So as you can see down here, uh, in this uh, uh, generic formula, uh, based on first principle, you will find that when you replace P with MV, you actually get an expression where F is equal to V dm dt plus M dv dt. So for O level, most of the time, we're using F equal to MA, and you can see why it is not uh, complete from the first principle perspective, because you're only looking at one part of the component. At O level, when you're using F equal to MA, you are by and large assuming that this component is zero. So for example, there will be cases whereby MA is zero. Let's take a look at this example uh, where a conveyor belt is used to move or transfer an average of 20 kilograms per second of luggage load at a constant speed of 1.5. So if the speed is 1.5, then your, uh, basically the object is not undergoing any form of acceleration. So you can see that your MA is zero. So in this case, F will be equal to F dm dt. So the speed is 1.5 meter per second, while the dm dt is 20 kilogram per second. So from there, you end up with 30 Newton. There's another term that you need to be familiar with, which is termed as impulse. Impulse is the product of a force over time, and impulse measures the change in momentum of the object. So impulse, like force, is also a vector. So if we start with F equal to dp dt, then we know that uh, if we do the integration itself, uh, then this component is in actual fact your impulse. So impulse in a nutshell is actually the, uh, the change in momentum, which is actually the final momentum subtract by the initial. So in this example here, we actually uh, illustrate how impulse can be calculated. So impulse is the change in momentum. So it's the mass of the car. And in this context, the car is traveling at 100 km per hour, but comes to a halt when it collides with a lamppost. So the final velocity is uh, zero and the initial velocity is 27.8. And uh, so the unit of impulse will be Newton second or otherwise kilogram meter per second, like in the case of momentum. Let's take a look at what happened when a steel ball is dropped at a certain height and uh, it landed on the wing scale. And you can see that the, uh, uh, when the ball, uh, just before the ball hits the wing scale, the speed uh, has increased to uh, V, all right, due to acceleration due to gravity. And uh, upon in contact with the wing scale, there's actually a reaction force that's acting on the ball to slow it down until the ball becomes at rest. So the ball will drop down and uh, the, uh, the ball will actually stop uh, thereafter. So in terms of the reading that's registered uh, and the time, if you have the force time graph, this is actually uh, what you get, which means that there will be actually an opposing force, uh, which actually varies by going to the peak and then thereafter subsiding uh, to the time T naught. So as far as the force is concerned, force acting on the object, is defined as the rate of change of momentum. So there's dp dt. So we're taking the convention as downward is positive. So the force acting on the object is downward. The speed is moving uh, uh, downward as well. So, uh, so bear in mind that the, uh, it means that the force acting on the ball will be negative f equal to dp dt. So from here, we can actually have this, which is equal to change in p and the change in momentum uh, because it's actually, the final speed is actually zero. So the initial speed is actually P. So uh, in this case, the negative and negative will negate each other. So MV is equal to integral of FT. So integral of FT uh, will actually be from time, uh, uh, basically zero to T naught, which is actually the area under the graph. So this, so in a nutshell, this will be equal to area under the FT graph.
So let's take a look what happened if you were to raise the ball and make the ball higher. We know that when you actually, uh, just before it hits the weighing scale, we know that you know, this MV will be of a larger value. And because MV is of a larger value, then the area under the FT graph must be higher. So which means that we expect actually a significantly higher force and actually a longer time to bring the momentum of the ball to zero.